Hello? Can you hear me? My name is Dmitry Belovsky. I work in Red Hat since 2020. I maintain OpenSSL and OpenSSH there. Oh, I am also have honor to be a, open, a member of OpenSSL Technical Committee. Uh, my uh, beloved pet project is also OpenSSL related. But today I will not speak about OpenSSL directly. I am going to speak about uh, introducing post-quantum cryptography uh, in uh, Fedora. So first, yes, I understand that uh, all of uh, those who came here understand uh, what's cryptography for. But uh, let me remind that for uh, Strowman, understanding of cryptography is it's ciphers. But uh, experienced people remember that uh, there is much more than ciphers. So there are various identity uh, in integrity checks. There. Are digital signature and uh, anyway when you want uh, to just cipher something uh, you should uh, provide a key to both party and uh, it's also a task of cryptography so we are waiting uh, the moment uh, when uh, quantum computers appear and will break uh, at least uh, several parts of the cryptography applications uh, speaking, uh, uh, I'm speaking about uh, digital signature and uh, key exchange, but of course uh, some other areas also will be affected. We don't know when and where the quantum computers will uh, will appear. When I first heard about it, it was in nearest five years, and it's uh, still uh, in nearest five years for well. I say 20 years, uh, everyone can bet what happens uh, before uh, quantum computers or, say, nuclear fusion. But it doesn't matter that we should not be ready to the moment when they really appear. And uh, so one of uh, the organization management uh, pr providing cryptography standards, uh, American National Institute of Standards, initiated uh, the contest of uh, post-quantum cryptography in 2016. Here is some statistics. There were about 70 applications in uh, the first round, and uh, there were several rounds, and after the third one, in 2022, we got uh, four algorithms uh, selected for uh, standardization, and uh, we also get uh, several algorithms uh, to be uh, studied for backup standards. One of them is broken uh, since that moment. So here are the four algorithms uh, that were chosen uh, for the standardization. Uh, one of them is uh, chosen for K exchange, and three are chosen for digital signatures. Almost all of them, uh, except Sphinx Plus, are so-called lattice-based uh, uh, algorithms. Those uh, who attended the first post-quantum uh, presentation today, here in this room several hours ago, uh, understand what's it. I don't pretend I understand anything in math. <laughs> So just, just believe that uh, they belong to various uh, mathematical problems, and uh, so breaking one of them will not break the other. Now let's uh, talk about the standardization process at all. Uh, when uh, we say that uh, NIST has chosen an algorithm for standardization, well, it uh, doesn't really matter, not nothing, but uh, matters less than uh, we can expect. Because uh, before turning the chosen for standardization algorithm into standard, there will be some parameters tuning, there will be uh, something else, and it's not enough to standardize the algorithm itself. We also have to standardize uh, how these algorithms, uh, the keys, uh, the parameters are stored in uh, certificates, how they are used in various protocols. It's uh, the area of responsibility of uh, IETF 
International uh, Task Force. And uh, we also uh, should mention that uh, post-quantum algorithms are also in the sphere of interest of OASIS group, which develops uh, PKCS 11 standard, and as uh, the, the algorithms uh, will be used in uh, PKCS 11 standard com compliant uh, decisions. So the NIST standardization is expected to happen in 2024. What it means for us? For, for us, it means that uh, the next day uh, NIST uh, announced that they have standardized, uh, we will get a bunch of uh, clients' requests uh, to implement uh, post-quantum cryptography immediately. Yes, tomorrow, <laughs> yes. We, sh we, we, sh we should have already done the, this, why, why we were sleeping all, all this time. Uh, we hope for the best. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, the other standards uh, in the ITF and OASIS uh, areas of responsibility will also be ready, and we also will be ready to provide something. But for now, we have a strict recommendation of uh, NIST that we uh, that nobody should provide commercial uh, solutions on the uh, versions that are not uh, on the versions of post quantum crypto that are not standardized so we can do much what can we do now well now we can uh, use uh, fedora as a sort of playground following the, our principle upstream first then at uh, the mo uh, at some moment uh, fedora will turn into our next version of Red Hat. And uh, we should choose the library. And we should provide some experiments, uh, see what are the narrow places of uh, integrations of uh, this library with the crypto libraries we maintain, and see how, the, how they work together, how different libraries are interoperable. I will talk about uh, two libraries, OpenSSL, which is uh, a base for all uh, the uh, server software, and uh, for NSS, uh, that is a base for uh, su uh, such popular client software as uh, Firefox, uh, Internet Browser, and uh, some other. So, NSS uh, implements uh, cryptography uh, via PKCS11 interface. That's why I mentioned the OASIS group and PKCS11 standardization. And uh, OpenSSL, a, re a recent version we are go going to play with, uh, has implemented so-called provider API. It's a pluggable API that allows uh, to, uh, that in theory allows uh, implementing any new crypto uh, and uh, it will just work. Uh, well, it's not true. It will not just work. Uh, at, uh, at least it will not just work with uh, the current uh, OpenSSL releases because uh, some features will appear only in uh, the next release, uh, 3.2. But uh, with the current release, you already, if you have uh, some post-quantum implementing uh, some provider implementing post-quantum algorithm, you already can make some experiments. So, we have to choose the library and our choice is uh, quite reasonable. It's LibreKS project. Uh, it's a sort of post-quantum ecosystem. Well, it's uh, the library which is the standard de facto. Uh, as far as I know, there were several ITF ha hackathons and all the projects that use something C-based used LibreQS. Uh, uh, this project, uh, the authors of this project also have uh, implemented uh, OpenSSL provider. Okay, LibreQS provider, and uh, working with, uh, uh, working in uh, close contact with OpenSSL core team. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, they implement, uh, they uh, did their best, and uh, current master uh, supports, uh, as far as I uh, know, everything that can be done now until we have a finalized specifications. 
Well, it also inherits, uh, uh, it also shares a code base with uh, uh, another library, much smaller, PQClean, that uh, will be the source of uh, post-quantum algorithms implementations in NSS. So, it's uh, the most significant slide in the presentation. Why, why you can't uh, just uh, say you install LibreQS, uh, LibreQS provider, and uh, run experiments? Not because I'm lazy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are some license problems with LibreQS. Uh, most of the code is licensed uh, uh, under the MIT license, which is not the problem. There are also parts of code that are licensed under <coughs> other licenses, which are fine for us, uh, such as Apache 2, uh, uh, Unilicense, and so on and so forth. But uh, there are some parts of code. Unfortunately, uh, the implementation of the algorithms that we are uh, that we are the most interested in uh, in the uh, under Creative Commons license, which is not uh, suitable for including uh, into Fedora as is. We will need uh, an exception for it. We are working on it, and uh, I hope that sometime later we will be able to include LibreQS into Fedora. So again, briefly a reminder about upstream PQ readiness. Uh, well, uh, NSS has some implementation uh, based on P PQ Clean, but again, we will meet the same obst uh, the same uh, license obstacles uh, because it's uh, the it's exactly the same code uh, license that, uh, with a CCO license. OpenSSL uh, regularly li uh, runs tests uh, about uh, against the LibreQS provider, and uh, well, uh, they recently updated the version to the last current version of the LibreQS. But uh, again, let me repeat, the changes are in master only. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, it's uh, a discussion topic. We don't have a final solution uh, among uh, ourselves because LibreQS uh, itself has several uh, implementations of uh, crypto algorithms. It can uh, use uh, OpenSSL based implementation of low level algorithms such as SHA2 and SHA3 and AS, or we can use uh, uh, OpenSSL implementation. Uh, it, does not affect, uh, it doesn't affect NSS. It's not a problem for OpenSSL, but we in crypto team maintain two more. Uh, cryptographic uh, library, GNU-TLS and LibGCrypt. As uh, post-quantum crypto is uh, needed uh, to be implemented uh, in uh, most libraries, at least at some moment, if we use <coughs> OpenSSL-based uh, build, uh, it means that uh, we provide some uh, dependency between uh, uh, different crypto libraries, which uh, has, uh, well, there are good reasons not to do it. But uh, it's, a question, uh, it's a question of uh, near future, not of uh, just a moment. N uh, the nearest uh, problem we need to deal with is the license problem. As soon as it's dealt, uh, well, uh, LibreQS will appear in uh, Fedora Rawhide. Thank you very much. Feel free to ask questions. Alex. Huh? How ready is PHP? BGP? Oh, BGP ecosystem is not ready. Huh? PG, P, ah, PGP, uh, well, there are some efforts in uh, IETF, but uh, I'd say they're limited. It's not the primary target of uh, IETF uh, standardization now.
Sorry? Uh, well, uh, the, the, what about the cryptography used for encrypting the hard drive, right? Yeah, yeah uh, so it uh, usually uses uh, symmetric crypto, right? Not for the key, though. Uh, well, if, uh, if uh, KVR wrap is uh, implemented, uh, it's not a problem to add post quantum KVR wrap if it's doable. I think it's doable. Uh, I think it's not ready for now. The network, network is not ready. So Pr probably so yes. There's some, there's different protocols that are used in uh, stuff like if you're you're wrapping a key with RSA with a like a key recovery system, that's going to be a problem. You, that's going to have to change. Most of, most of them, but just if you're just using the the log, you know, passwords, then. That's your key generation, and that's that's promised safe already. If you're using uh, Clevis, then we have a lot of work to do still, because that's a whole new protocol which we need to figure out how it works with the post quantum algorithm. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much.